Today we're going to have a look at the curve modifier and I've started off with the result from the screw modifier, this helix and it's uh, actually a very elegant technique to combine a lot of modifiers. I'm going to go into detail with that in uh, one of the later tutorials and um, I just added a Bezier curve and scaled it roughly the same size of this um, of my helix and it's a good idea to apply the scale before you use a screw modifier uh, sorry I keep saying that before I, you use a curve modifier so press control A and apply the scale whoops that was weird okay no that's not um, if I apply the scale, I think this here is relative to the scale of your object. Okay, I can apply the scale, but then I have to readjust this value. Okay, and um, yeah, I should have probably mentioned that in the screw tutorial, but I just found out. So uh, yeah, here's the add-on. And if I select this one and shift select the curve and press Control P, I get a couple of objects. I can just use a normal object. I can use a curve deform, which we are going to do. I can use it to follow a path or a path constraint. So let's choose curve deform, and you can immediately see my helix is now following my curve. And um, this is working really well, unless I move it away, something like that. And um, this is actually happening quite a bit, so um, what I can do if you have this weird result is you can press shift s cursor to select it with the curve selected and then press shift s selection to cursor with your helix selected and that will sort of recenter your object and you can now use your slider to move it along the curve until it's at the position that you want to the slider that is perpendicular to the curve axis local or world curve axis, global curve axis. Okay, you can now modify the curve and see your object, be object being deformed in real time which is kinda nice and um, there are some deformation axis settings. If your object ever behaves in a really weird way and you don't know why then I suggest you start clicking around in these options. Other than that uh, you should probably leave them alone because by default they usually work and uh, for example if you see here I'm only deforming the y-axis which is sort of translating the y-axis to the z-axis which uh, actually makes the object behave very weird and you can see if I check the deformation axis to be y and move the object in y it will then follow the curve and get distorted along the curve but just a little bit. So, as I said, if your object is behaving really odd, then start clicking around here, and um, you will see that hopefully this will solve your problem. But um, for the most cases, you will leave this at X at the standard settings. And um, it's uh, you can also use an array modifier in in. Um, combination with a curve to sort of make a curve beveled but with a more complex object than the normal NURB cylinder. Um, yeah, that's it for the curves. Not much to say unless, uh, except for you can limit it to a vertex group uh, as well, like most of the modifiers. And the next day we're talking about the displace modifier. We're talking